Last night, November 9th at around 10 o'clock, this video that had been previously uploaded to my channel had been removed for a false privacy complaint. I filed an appeal, but unfortunately YouTube's appeal process can take anywhere from 10 to 30 days, and it has been confirmed that the video was falsely removed by my ex, which this video is about. YouTube has had an issue with false privacy complaints and false copyright strikes on their platform for a very, very long time, so this is a re-upload of my original video that I uploaded five days ago. However, one key difference in this upload is that I have included an extra six and a half minutes of footage that I did not include in my original video in which my ex threatens to me directly after the DV incident. So with that said, I give you full permission to spread, download, and redistribute this video in case it goes down again. And if it does, considering that I've already went and blurred some more stuff in this video, I will release more voice memos and I will just continuously keep releasing things because this video originally was almost three hours in length and I actually cut a large portion out because it was just so much and I just didn't want to go keep going through it and talking about it to the public. Um, but if push comes to shove, that will happen. So, uh, yeah, here you go. Okay, stop kicking me. Man, who got mad? Who into the call? Somebody did. I don't know. But there was like 15 people in here, so there was too many people to point. Hey, Maya, so, um, what's the plan to, like, destroy BB? Because she's gross, man. We gotta take her down. What do you mean? I already released her news. Yeah, but what else are we going to do? We got to do something bigger than that. We got to do something. I, huh? I can't do any more legal stuff activity on my computer because I already destroyed the other one. Well, uh, well we, got, we just got to do something really cool. So approximately how many chats did you send those in? Uh, All of them. Yeah. As many as I'm in, so all of them. Damn, that's a lot, huh? <laughs> all that, and I handed, and then I'm handed them to people who spread like you, and then to yeah, but he also spread shit, so I just handed them over to people who I know respect them like law of fire. Well, thanks, Maya. I'm hurt. What'd you want to get them? <laughs> what? Well, you said Shopping. you gave them to people who spreads them. So, you know, one of the first fights I got it was because she said I was going to spread a news. That's why I'm like, wow. Alright, do you want uh, yeah. to... I'll hand them to you if you spread them. Uh, I think they're already been spread in all the call them in, so... I had that discussion but, with Maya. Yeah, but you can re-spread them. Okay. I mean, if that's what you'd like me to do, you gotta add everything. Look what I made for dinner! You know, there's definitely nothing more empowering to women than releasing photos of someone because they talked to somebody else that you were talking to at the time. You know, because releasing revenge of other people and using your Skype community to do that definitely shows that you have a passion and love for other women. Hey, hi, hello, my name is Daniel, and this is a message to my ex-girlfriend who I will not be naming directly in any capacity because she doesn't deserve that much acknowledgement. This is really a no win win for me because my ex-girlfriend is somebody who craves attention regardless of whether that is positive or negative. She kind of thrives on that. I know that by doing this video, it's just going to fuel her ego even more. But at the end of the day, I have a right to respond and defend myself against some insane, serious accusations that she has thrown towards me. Coincidentally, 24 hours after I posted a photo of my new relationship online, my ex proceeded to accuse me of some very severe things. And we're gonna be addressing those things today. But before we address those accusations that she's made towards me, I wanna set a precedent of the type of individual that we are dealing with here. In the end of August of 2020 and into September, I caught my ex-girlfriend cheating on me. I sat on this for over a week and a half, eventually telling her that she needed to leave because our names are both on the lease and that I'm kicking her out and she's gonna be staying with a friend of mine for roughly one to two weeks. That one to two weeks ended up turning into actually almost three to four months. And we got back together roughly around in January to February, which officially ended in March of 2021 of this year. What you're about to listen to is 25 minutes of audio from my ex-girlfriend admitting and confessing to some things that I think a lot of people may, um, how do I describe this? 
understand the context in which I'm coming from with all this and how messy of a breakup this actually was. Not because I made it messy, but because she did. I have never met someone who no matter what you do to help them, no matter what you do to push them forward, no matter what you do to try to help them in every possible way, somehow, some way, still point at you that me, Daniel, is the villain. So before you listen to this audio, I have a few questions I'd like to ask my audience. Uh, number one, why, if you are alleging that I am this terrible, 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 terrible person who did all these horrible things to you, why, after I left your ass, I broke up with you, I cut contact with you, clear cut, did you text me over and over and over again asking me for, for more money? Because quite frankly, I find it weird that somebody would consist consistently reach out to their abuser, their alleged abuser, when and ask them for money continuously. Why would you do that? Why would you continuously ask your, your abuser to follow you back on social media after he left? Why would you complain about being cut off from the Nintendo account, uh, from Netflix, from Hulu, from Disney Plus, you know, all these things that you were attached to because we were in a relationship. Why would you complain about being cut off from all of these things and ask me for more money up until June of this year, which wasn't that long ago? And then in October of this month, you reach out to me yet again. Can somebody answer me that question? Because quite frankly, if, if, if somebody is this horrendous person, why would you knowingly continuously reach out to me? Why would you want my help? I don't understand. Can somebody explain to me that concept? I, I'd really appreciate it because I'm confused, but I digress. Let's jump into the audio. Sorry, I was like being saged. Are you drunk? <laughs> I wish. I wish. I want more wine. I have wine. That's what I'm doing. It's wine in the other room. So Daniel keeps texting me. No way. What is he saying? He's like, I know, I know, you, I know you're still talking to him. I can feel it in my gut. I can feel it in my heart. I know, I know. Did you admit it or no? No. <laughs> But he's not, but he's not wrong. I just love how my ex admits that I was right the whole time. You see, when I caught my ex cheating on me and I told her she needs to leave and she's going to go be stay with my friend for a few weeks, one of the stipulations in order for her to move back and us to work on a relationship, because I try to give people multiple chances, which is a screw up and flaw on my own character for allowing that to even happen. But regardless, the stipulation was is that now that she's kicked out, she needs to come to me and apologize, and she needs to cut contact with the person who she was cheating on me with. It just so happens that my friend Belle recorded this FaceTime with my ex, who then indirectly told me without actually telling me that yes, my ex-girlfriend is still talking to the person who she was cheating on me with, and that my ex-girlfriend was lying to me directly, just as my gut feeling, you know, thought, that even after I kicked her out, even after she was caught, she continued on with this person. And I lost it. I lost it. And on September 26th of 2020, I sent a breakup text. This right here. I made it very abundantly clear that I'm done. I'm not going to sit around with my fingers twiddling around. Oh, is my girlfriend going to choose me or not? No. I'm not going to be made a second option ever. You were unfaithful to me. And I should have never, ever, ever thought of even attempting to try to reconcile or fix anything with you. But leave it to me. I'm going to be pretty stupid in a lot in a lot of the things I'm about to explain in the rest of this video. I've made some dumb decisions. I made some stupid choices because I genuinely cared about this person and I'm screwed up for allowing my care to oversee my irrationality and my ability to think logically about a situation. That is on me and I take full responsibility for that, but we'll get into that later. Oh my god. You need to admit it though. You need to. You need to. You need to just say, Daniel, I... I caught feelings for someone else. You're not gonna listen to me. <laughs> you're not. I know you're not gonna listen to me. I just, I just But what? Okay, so let me ask you. What happens if he makes? Let's say he. Let's say he 
messages Adrian. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna kill myself. Oh my god. Oh, but like, let's say, know. cause what? If, what if he has a dick picture of him? What are you? Gonna I'm do? going. I'm gonna destroy Mr. Ramsey on. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm sorry, X. I'm not like you. I don't release nudes of people who I have vindictive, malicious intent for, even if they end up hurting me. Men or women, I'm not like you. I will never be like you. Yeah, but like, what could you even say, like? so much shit. Oh my god. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't, and I don't want to. But, I already said I don't want to. But if it comes down to it, you will. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, if he gets in the way of anything happy, listen, I'm going to. <laughs> if he gets in the way of me being happy, look, X. I would never stop someone from being happy. What I will stop somebody from doing is lying about what actually happened and pretending like it didn't happen at all because it's far easier for you to imagine in fantasy land that you didn't do these things that you did. That's so bad, Belle. Look at the chat. Look at this. On Insta? Yeah. You don't send it over text. Fuck no! It's so bad! Look at it! Wait, what did I say? Oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> bad! Oh, scandalous. Is it? Is it scandalous? Just a few more days. <laughs> Fuck! Are you, like, nervous? Are you gonna bitch yeah. out? Yeah, I am. Are you gonna bitch out? What are you thinking? Yeah, I am. You're, like, you're not gonna go, you think? No, I'm gonna go. It's, like, 20 minutes away. I already looked up. It's, like, $22 Uber ride. Bitch, every dollar counts. You're gonna be fucking whole for No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. I have $300 in my account. <laughs> So what are you going to do financially? Well, financially, I can stay here as long as I need. Oh. As long as I clean up on Sundays. And that's it? And that's what she said, I don't know. So you're just going to be there and date Adrian? Until Adrian <coughs> offers you to move in? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my god, wait till Keemstar finds out about this. No. Oh my god. Well, Keemstar you... is gonna find out about this. Well, you can't, you can't, like, let Keemstar! Say... Keemstar! Yeah, but I don't think, I don't think Daniel would do that to you unless you did. Keemstar that. offered me $10,000 to expose Daniel. No! Oh my god, he's gonna make a drama alert with, like, all of my points. No way. $10,000? He's loaded. Are you kidding me? I wanted like 50. Oh my god. I want 50. No way. No way. Ha! Huh. Gold digging 101, I see. No way. I mean, <gasps> at, at this point. No. Oh. oh, I want Adrian so bad. Just oh. don't. Like, let's say, like, like, do you think Repsion's gonna make a video about it? I don't say Repsion. What video? Like, oh, he's not going to do that. He has too much pride for himself. Yeah. He would never do that. He, he would be exposing himself more than me. Actually, X, the reason I'm making this video is because I have pride. Because regardless of how humiliating and embarrassing this is to talk about publicly and reveal things, even about myself and you, I'm not trying to hide anything. Transparency, X, is something that I will always have above you. Regardless of whether it makes me look bad or dumb or stupid, pathetic, what have you. I know how the internet works. I know this is gonna be taken apart and I'm gonna be mocked and ridiculed. I'm ready for it, I'm prepared for it. But my response to you is because I have pride. You don't get to slander and lie about me because you're insecure and upset that I'm in a new relationship. Yeah, because everyone would say I told you so. Exactly.
Oh my god. And there's no there's no reason to go after him unless he like went after you or something. What if he messages Adrian though? That's it. It's over. I know. <laughs> Why exactly would I go after somebody who you cheated on me with, in which you lied to the person who you cheated on me with, telling him that you paid for a hotel that I paid for. You lied to me, and then you lied to the person who you were cheating on me with. And you're right, I am exposing myself, but I have no problem in doing so. Because unlike you, I don't try to hide from my fuck-ups, my past, nor do I try to censor people who have a differing, a differing opinion of me or who are critical of me, unlike you. You'd bug the fuck out, though. What do I do? You just gotta- do do? You gotta be- You gotta be honest, bro. You have to, like, tell him. Like, I I've don't- I've been honest. No. With both people. No. You have not been honest with both people. Yeah, I yeah. have. No, you have not. <laughs> At least don't lie to me. Like, I know that you haven't- <laughs> Okay, well, what should I say? When I say that my ex-girlfriend's deranged, this is what I'm talking about. She literally tells herself how honest she's being, all the while admitting <laughs> that she's also lying. I flat up told my ex-girlfriend, even before I confronted her about cheating on me, because I knew something was happening. I sat on it for about a week and a half with knowledge of what was happening, and I wanted to see how far it would go. I even approached her and I said, this was a he said, she said conversation, but I approached her and I said, hey, you know, if you're not happy in this relationship, you're more than welcome to walk out. You're more than welcome to just let me know if you have feelings for somebody else. I made it really obvious that I knew something was going on, and yet she still knowingly lied to me and said, nothing's going on. I think that you should tell Daniel the truth. Like, you should say, like, basically, like, I love you. You said you were gonna write it out. Yes, I know. I'll, I'll give you pointers on what to say. You just gotta say, I love you. And I'm sorry. I and... wanna fuck each. No, you don't say that. You just say, I wanna be happy and I need to, I need to just explore my options. I'm young and, and I don't know. You know, X, it would have been far easier had you just been honest and upfront with me. Say, hey, I don't want to be with you anymore, and I would have accepted that and moved on, <laughs> bang, super, super fast. That would be so much easier than dealing with this game that you created with messages like this, which are extremely self-revealing of themselves, admitting that I don't know what man will treat me as good as Daniel does. I snap my fingers and he's always there for me, all the while talking behind my back. And mind you, this is, this is the one of the many icings, different flavors of the cake that we're gonna have in this video. She sent me a photo of the person she cheated on me with, mind you, right here. Um, and this was my response, I was pretty cordial. I said, why don't you just post that picture of you and him online? This is after I broke up with her, mind you. So after I broke up with her on September 26th, or the 27th, uh, three days after, two or three days after that, she actually met up with the person who she was cheating on me with. So technically her meeting up with him after I broke up with her, it's none of my business because we weren't technically together. She's an adult, she can go screw around and do whoever she wants to do, you know? Not my business, I broke up with her. But to send your ex-boyfriend a photo of the guy who you cheated on me with? Woo! Boy, that hurt. I'm not even gonna bullshit with that one. That fucking hurt. At that moment, bang, emotional shutdown mode hit. That's evil. That is just pure, Evilness, and there's no uh, look. Regardless of how much you dislike, nobody can can sit there and honestly say that's not an evil thing to do. Is to send a photo of a person who you've cheated on your partner with, and then brag about it. Who does that? My ex did. It's just where are you gonna live? Well, you're gonna live there, but you need to get a job. Yeah, no, they said I. It could help me get a job on base, but I already have a job, and that means I'm gonna have to quit my job because it's too far away. So yeah, and you need to get a car and a license. God damn it! Driving's very easy, Maya. You literally just uh, I'm scared. Yeah, you'll be fine. Adrian literally texted me. He had the fucking tree go through his fucking window today. A tree? A tree! Why? He was driving in L.A. and he had a tree go through the back of his truck. Oh and now, and now today he had the same thing happen again. What? That's weird. I don't really trust him driving with it. Really? 
Yeah, because it's an average crinkle through my heart. <laughs> And I'm starting my period. Oh shit. We have a week. Uh, if you're on your period, are you still gonna go? I mean, what's Wednesday tomorrow? And I'm not going till Monday night, so I think I'll be okay. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, though. Are you gonna use a condom? Like... Use a condom. Oh my god, am I gonna use a condom? Yes. Yeah, use a condom. I kind of want his babies. What's so disgusting about this is she said the same thing about me. She said the same thing about multiple other men. Just fine, like at the end of the day, but it's just a pattern of behavior that I've really noticed is my ex become hyper-focused on one specific individual because she wants them in the same way that she inserted herself into my life when she was of age, wanting to date me. And at first I was very apprehensive, but I gave it a shot because I've only really had two other relationships. One was when I was a teenager, the other one went right when I moved out at like age 21. I really hadn't had a lot of relationship experience. This was my third relationship I've ever been in and she really, really, really wanted to date me. I had never met somebody who was this insistent on wanting to insert themselves into my life. And eventually I caved and I'm like, you know what, you, see, you don't seem that, you seem pretty okay, you seem sane. And we met up when she was 19, and I was 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I was 24, technically, when we met. Five to six year age difference. She was born November 3rd, 97. I was born 91, December 5th. Oh my god, no. <laughs> no. No. No, but on, on a serious note, that is a bad no. idea. Yeah, idea, yeah, I know. Very bad idea. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. In the moment, don't even be like, come inside me, daddy. No. <laughs> no, 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 Don't, 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 don't do that. Oh my god. No, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Oh my god. Don't ever say that again. <laughs> um, I don't know, bro. I don't know. I just feel like you gotta tell Dan. Maybe you should tell him before you go Monday. What about all your stuff? What do you mean? Your stuff, your clothes, your, your, everything you brought with you? What yeah. About, what about your animals? I took the most expensive things with me. I took my Gucci belt. I took a uh, Moschino. I took, um, I took the, the, the crystal necklace you gave me. You're going to have to sell shit. Yeah, I know. That's why I took it. Yeah, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to sell shit. You should sell that. Uh. For our first year anniversary, I bought her a silver ruby diamond necklace. Paid it off in roughly three to four months. And after things were officially officially done in March of 2021, she sent me some text messages asking me for <laughs> the receipt of this uh, diamond ruby necklace that I purchased for her for our first an year anniversary. I need the receipt, Daniel. I need to trade this in. It's just rich karma to me, honestly, because I don't have the receipt and I wouldn't give you the receipt even if I did have it. Like, do you understand how horrible that is to send somebody? Can I have the receipt from this expensive thing you bought me? Like, no, screw off. That PC. Hell no! Fucking kill myself. No way. It's a PC built oh by uh, Mr. Repsail. No. no, I built that. Oh, really? I built that. Yeah, I built that. He did He did do the wiring, but I put all the pieces together and got all the pieces and put them together and, hard, and hardwired it. These are just such tiny little minuscule things that you lie about. And I don't know why. I taught you how to build a computer, but you did not build it. And I know this is completely not relevant to the conversation, but it just, it, it, it irks me. That little things like this, she would knowingly lie about, like, oh, I built the computer. No, you didn't. I had, I showed you step by step. The only thing you put in was the RAM and the GPU, because it's literally like a slide insert, you know? Because one of your dreams was to have a gaming computer, an actual gaming computer, and I wanted to make that dream possible. So I spent my hard-earned cash, on you to make sure that you could have that so you could experience having a proper gaming PC because I'm a gamer. You just always diminish what people do for you. We'll get into that later. But he did he did do the wiring of connecting things together, but I built it. Do you think you're going to regret this and miss him at all? Probably. So was it worth it 100%? I don't know, but I just want to do it. Jesus. 
Yeah, but you, once this is done, you probably can't go back. Not if he doesn't know. That's true, but like, what do you think? You could really lie. You could lie that hard. I feel like I would break. I'd crack. I'd act like it never happened. But then, if what? I really, if I really, really, really wanted to, you could. If you think, you think if he knew, and then you said sorry, you think he'd take you back? I would never admit to it. Holy guacamole, Batman! What a realization! <laughs> Not if he doesn't know. Joke's on you, bitch. I knew the whole time. And yet somehow, some way, me being a fucking idiot and allowing my feelings to over to take control over my actual ability to think rationally, but also because I was also still on a lease with you. And legally, because we were both on a lease, I couldn't keep her out of the apartment any longer. So the stipulation was in January, she'd move back in. We'd try to work on our relationship. But most of all, we'd go to couples therapy, which we'll get into later in this video, but we're not done yet. It's crazy. I know, right, Belle? This is crazy. When did you- I'm sorry. No, 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 you're good. You're fine. Why did I what? what? When did you start talking to him? Like, when you texted me? Like, right before? To Adrian? Yeah. I've been talking to Adrian since Dan caught me. No way. All I could think about was talking to him and telling him that, well, <clears throat> you know, blah, blah, blah. And then Adrian got upset because Mr. Rusty had to have his I doubt he would do anything with that, though. He would no, do he wouldn't. Cause I would, I would destroy him. I would go to Keemstar and I would, I would spill. What? What is this scandalous stuff? What is, what is, what? What? Like what? Though? I know a lot of things. Like spill. Like, Daniel was the first one to cheat on me in the very beginning. Like... No way he cheated on you? Yeah, with a girl named Michaela. Damn, X. Another lie from you. I've never cheated on you at any point. And I know exactly what you're referencing. You see, when we first started dating the six months of our relationship, you went through every single one of my followers on Instagram, and you went to every individual female who I followed. You then proceeded to go through every single picture that I had ever liked, and read every single comment. Some of these comments and likes and, and things that I said to other people who I followed on Instagram were even before we ever dated. But what she's focusing on is specifically an emoticon. Now this is a he said, she said situation. I realize that, but I have never cheated on you. I could never cheat on you. I would never cheat on anybody. My parents have been married for 50 plus years. My grandparents have been married for over 50 plus years. My other grandparents have been married for 50 plus years. I grew up monogamous. I grew up that way. I would never cheat on you because I couldn't. No matter how, what, what you've done to me, I mentally, guilt consciously, I couldn't do it. I, 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 I already struggle with guilt and shame with how I grew up still even now as 29 years of age. I couldn't live with myself if I cheated. Oh, I just spit there. But what she's talking about is an emoji. <laughs> oh my God. You can't make this shit up. It's an emoji. She, I remember this, this was in 2018. This was like our first argument that we had. It was over an emoji that I had left on a girl's photo several months into our relationship, which in retrospect, I can understand from a girl's perspective how that would be upsetting or whatever, but leaving an emoji with hard eyes on a photo of a girl, I'm sorry, that's not cheating. It's not. I know in your brain, your deranged, deluded, imaginary world of my ex, you think that that's cheating. And you told me this is how it made you feel. It made you feel a certain way, and you know what I did? I went back, I deleted that emoji, 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 and I blocked the person because you wanted me to block them because you felt uncomfortable by them. And you know what? Even now to this very day, if somebody, if my partner comes to me and says, I'm uncomfortable by this, I'll be happy to be obliged to whatever makes them comfortable in the relationship. It's called compromise, and I'm happy to do that even now in the relationship that I'm in, but thankfully, I'm not dating an insecure bitch who has to attack other women who she deems a threat with any sort of interaction. 
This is just one of many, and if you do some digging on her, you'll find all of this stuff. This is how she would talk to subscribers of mine and viewers on, on, of mine on Twitter. By the way, she got suspended on Twitter twice. She's on her third account. Technically, she shouldn't even have at this point for literally attacking other women. Oh, you want another, another great conversation? This was another one that happened actually in my Discord community where she attacked this girl who came into my Discord. He was a bit tipsy and the girl flirted with me. I told her that I was in a relationship and bada bing, bada boom. My girlfriend at the time just unleashed and you can see her interactions with this other girl and how she interacts with other women for simply talking, for simply being friends, for simply having any association with me in any way, platonically. I was not allowed to have female friends at all. It even got to a point where my patrons, several patrons of mine, unpledged from me because of my ex going after them and just being vile and toxic and calling them a pig, calling them ugly. And I sat like an idiot twiddling my fingers trying to say like, you can't do this, please stop. You're better than this. I know you can change. This is like not healthy. Nobody acts like this. Most normal people don't do this. I was constantly stuck in an abusive relationship trying to help her grow and like giving her chance after chance after chance. And part of the problem, and this is on me, is I enabled this. I 100% enabled it. I enabled it, but at the same time, what people don't understand is behind the scenes, I was actively trying to help her grow and change and change that type of behavior. Because I've always, have, I've always been of the belief, uh, with the exception of now, that most people are capable of change and growth. I really try to give every single person, even people I don't like, the benefit of the doubt. Even people who screw me over the benefit of the doubt. And that's a flaw. Because there's a point where you become an enabler. And that was me. And I am so sorry to any girl or to any man who she indirectly affected or hurt during the time that I was with this girl. I just want people to be aware that I wasn't just sitting behind the scenes saying, go ex-girlfriend, I support you. I was actively trying to help and explain to her. I can't, I can't even express how many conversations we had of me trying to explain like, you can't say things like this. You can't be, why are you acting like this? Why are you attacking other women like this? Just stop. She couldn't deal, she couldn't deal with any woman being friends with me. I actually lost a male friendship at the start of a relationship due, because of her. I lost multiple friends because of this girl. And might I remind you, ex, that you were convinced I was cheating the first three months of our relationship. You got on my Facebook when I was asleep and you downloaded my entire Facebook archive. Over 10 years of archive because you were convinced I was cheating on you and you found nothing. One of the problems with my ex is if you give her an inch, she'll take 20 miles. Because the first few times I blocked people she was uncomfortable by, it just got progressively more extreme, more extreme. She would send me random accounts that would mention her or mention me in a critical way and she'd demand that I block them. And here's the reality. If I didn't block them, it would turn into a whole fight. She'd say things like, I don't love her, I don't care about her, if I was a good boyfriend, I would block these people. Extremely manipulative stuff. It was just far easier just to give in and not fight and not have a fight every other day because she can't accept the fact that I don't really block people that frequently on social media. I can deal with criticism quite well, but thanks to her and me giving in to her fucking demands, it made me look like an absolute pussy at the end of the day. That's the reality. And I actually, I've unblocked a lot of people that um, I used to have blocked on social media because I'm no longer with her. So I don't care if people talk negatively about me, it's fine. But another incident that actually happened kind of pertaining to the same subject, is when I was in Vegas uh, with my best friend, Victor, my ex was with me and we had another friend, female friend, a platonic friend um, who I've known for quite some time too. Um, we did dune bugging in Las Vegas, right? And, ooh, this gets me so mad. My ex decided it would be a great idea to make a whole scene, a whole fight out of the fact that I let my platonic female friend borrow my hoodie. I had a, a, a white grayish hoodie because we were dune bugging in Las Vegas and in the desert, it's really, really, really cold. She didn't bring any warm clothes. So I lent her my hoodie. At the end of the trip, I didn't ask her my hoodie back. I said she could have it. My ex, girlfriend at the time, went ballistic over the fact. There's just one simple text exchange. I refused to go to my platonic friend and say, I want my hoodie back, because I gave it to her. She's cold. It's not a big deal, it's just a hoodie. I can get another one, it's 
materialistic items. It's not that big a deal for me. My girlfriend at the time thought it was. She expressed to me that how uncomfortable it made her that are my platonic free male friends wearing my clothes, a hoodie to keep warm. And she demanded that I address her, and I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I stood up, I stood my ground, I said, I'm not doing this. So she reached out to my best friend, Victor, who Victor was with my other female friend, and uh, said how uncomfortable it made her feel. And could you ask for the hoodie back? No. No. She still has that hoodie, by the way. What girl has that level of insecurity, genuinely, that I can't even give warm clothes to a platonic female friendship. Can somebody explain that to me? What possesses somebody to act and behave this way? Every little thing was always an issue. Because I used to have a pledge on my Patreon that if you would pay me $50 a month, I would add you on my personal Facebook. She went and removed a bunch of my patrons who paid money for me to add them on my personal Facebook. She also went after another platonic female friend of mine by the name of Pia, told her to go herself because I was friends with her. Because apparently any woman who posts herself, her body or cleavage or any context is automatically a threat and I all by default wanna fuck every single girl I interact with. This was something that was constantly a repetitive thing in our relationship. I felt trapped, and I felt stuck. Oh my god. Um, he plagiarized somebody. Wow, X. You certainly got me there. I plagiarized somebody? Yeah. It's almost like I made a video talking about my fuck-up almost seven, eight years ago. Wow. You totally got me there. Remember when I mentioned about transparency? Something that I have that you don't, X? You're gonna use things that I've already addressed and I've already apologized and I've already made and I already fixed from something from seven, eight years ago? Is this really the path we wanna go down? Cause my goodness, if we're gonna hold me accountable for almost eight, nine, you know, seven, eight, nine years ago, we gotta hold you accountable for the things you've done in the last year and a half, two years. Those are far more recent than me. It's a bunch of different shit. Burked in my vagina. Oh my god. Uh, ooh, excuse me. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Wink brownies. What is that? It's a wink brownie. Oh, I wish I had one, honestly. Why, Daniel, play yourself? Oh, he made you weed brownies even when you're cheating on him? Yeah, look! Look. Oh my god. That shit looks good as fuck. I'm not cheating on him. Okay. You're cheating on him, but... You just don't want to say that. It sounds wrong. If he- if you saw him doing it to you, it would be considered cheating. I wouldn't care if he did it to me. Like, I really genuinely? Wouldn't. I wouldn't care. You wouldn't care? Huh. I think this audio says otherwise, X. Oh, you're gonna explore other options. But I'm telling you, if you have a girl over, that's exactly what's gonna fucking happen. You go explore other options. Go invite Tinder girls over, huh? I'm not playing this with you. I'm not gonna have you amp me up and turn me into the crazy one. Quit texting me. Literally, quit texting me. I can't take it anymore. But if you have a girl in that apartment, I, I'm going to walk there. I'm going to walk there with my bare feet dragging. You understand? me and I'm going I'm going to rip her fucking hair out of her skull you're gonna have to book me I swear to god I'm gonna get a charge I swear to god not done yet let's go to the next one really you just said you want to explore other options that's exactly what you want so go fuck go fuck go have one night stands go use that new little vibrator that you were so desperate to go to go buy right in to get rid of okay so go fuck them dan go get tinder and go use that little new vibrator huh so go fucking do that i sh i i i swear to fucking god if you have a girl in in our apartment i oh, 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 
Oh, I'm, oh, Dan, oh, I'm shaking now. You, you think I'm fucking nuts? Have a girl in that apartment. Fucking use that vibrator on her. Use that vibrator on her. Smoke from the bong. Have her sit. Oh, oh, don't. Yeah, totally somebody who would be okay with me cheating on them. <clears throat> this was after I broke up with her, by, mind you. I really shouldn't have to explain this, but after I broke up with her and she went over to stay with my friend's house, which turned into a couple months, I was really struggling with dealing and processing everything that happened. Because obviously my trust has been betrayed and I trusted her 100%. It's been betrayed and I'm wrestling between, do I really want to try and work with this girl who's knowingly admitted to cheating on me, who doesn't give a living shit that she cheated on me, who's still continuously talking to the person who she cheated on me with, who also sent me a photo of the person who she cheated on me with and bragged about it after we broke, like, do, do I need to say more? So during the month of the end of September into like November, right? I was really wishy-washy, I admit that. But that's because I was still processing and grieving at the fact that you cheated on me and you were still cheating on me and I care about you, and trying to balance out those three things, I've never been in a situation like that. I don't even know how to handle it properly. It was overwhelmingly stressful and anxiety inducing and overall difficult. It's difficult to trust somebody after you've been betrayed so painfully by somebody like that, you know? So that's, what, that's why you need to like just leave, Maya, because if you don't care if he cheats on you, then it's dead. It's not going to just revive itself. You're not just going to wake up one day and be in love. <laughs> Does your friend Lizzie know what's going on? No. I, uh, she texted me and I didn't text her back. It's just a long story. I just don't want to tell anybody. No, I, 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 business. I would not tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. I haven't. I haven't. You're literally the only person that I fucking hope. You have to make sure that nobody knows, no Keemstar, none, none, none of that. Oh, the fucking last thing we need is fucking Keemstar. <laughs> Keemstar has already tried to get information out of me before. He's, he wanted me to, when Daniel and I broke up, he wanted me to call him Keemstar. The guy who has fucking three kids and married. Scandalous. I'm like, no, no, I'm not that scandalous. If you start, I'm really fucking oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 not like that. No way. Fucking Keemstar. <laughs> did you ever see iDub's video on him? The content cut? Yeah, I did. I fucking I'm friends. I'm friends with Anissa. Oh my god. I love him. I'm really. I'm. No, I'm not really friends with iDubs like Ian, but I'm really, really good friends with Anissa. She's his girlfriend. Because he's so cute. I'm obsessed with him. I she just... piggy, she piggybacked off his career. Yeah, hundred percent. With her OnlyFans bullshit. Oh, and even just her Instagram. I've seen her before. He's the only YouTuber ever in my life that I've ever gotten merch from. I mean, I didn't pay for it. Someone bought it for me, but. I have a sheet hoodie. I mean, she wants me to do an only fan sheet with her. Should I do it? Yeah, you should. I should? You need the money. You're going to be homeless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I love Ian. <laughs> I'm so big Ian on it. That's how cute he is. Well, Anissa and Ian are going to go fucking bold together. Why? Well, Anissa feels like her hair is thinning, so she wants to shave her head, and I was trying to talk her out of it. And I told her that she's going to be a giant meme on the internet because I dubs already goes bald. So if she goes bald and he goes bald, it's going to be a real fucking issue. Oh, my God. It's going to be everywhere. He's just, I love smart guys so much. <laughs> Do you think Adrian's using me? Do I think he's using you? I don't know. I don't talk to him. Do you think he's using you? 
What is what would you be using you for? For sex? Sex? Yeah. But would he need to use you for sex, realistically? If he wanted me for sex, then yes. Do you care? Because what do you keep talking about is fucking him. I mean, no offense, Belle, but I don't really want to fuck up Daniel forever. And fuck up this just to fuck, you know, some guy. It's, I don't know, that's something that you need to decide for yourself. You need to be honest with Daniel, though, because if you ever want a chance of being with him again, the best way is honesty, I'm telling you. Even when... Somebody with a brain. Thank you, Belle. I just love how Belle tried so hard to explain a reasonable approach to this ordeal, and yet somehow, someway, my ex just threw it all away. The level of simplicity of people just communicate and you say, this is how I feel, I don't want to be with you anymore, I'm done, I'm interested in somebody else, detach. Woohoo, I could deal with it. Instead, I dealt with the battered wife syndrome. Every time you would do something incredibly screwed up to me, and then you get on the ground and beg me, oh, Daniel, I'm so sorry, please forgive me, I'm sorry for doing this. He fucks up and does shit to me. I tell him all the time I probably could forgive anything as long as he was honest and sorry about it. It's a lot to consider. <laughs> you just need to, I guess, do what your heart feels. My heart feels is to go to Stan away on Monday night. Oh my god. Are you 20 sleep? minutes away. Are you gonna sleep? What? Are you gonna sleep there? I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. Oh my god, you're gonna sleep. <laughs> oh bad. Are you gonna tell anybody? Me? Yeah. Who am I telling? I don't know. I'm gonna need sh Take me off base. What is she? I'm, is on she a, I'm on a military base. Is she gonna tell you? I mean, is she, she gonna, gonna do what? it? Is she gonna do it? Yeah, she already said she'd do it. Does she? I just take an Uber. Does she know where you're going? Yes, she oh. knew before. Way before, before the fucking hotel. I I called. I said, listen. If Daniel ever ever asked where I was, I would be with you, but I'm not. I'm with Adrian, and she's so okay. Oh my God! <laughs> Jesus Christ! What? What? You're what? just in so deep. You're literally in so deep. I know, right? This is a mess. This is a fucking mess. But clearly it's what you want, you know? Is it though? No? I don't Is it no? Yeah, but like at the end of the day, if you were really in love, you wouldn't be doing this. I'm telling you. you no one no one who's in love is I didn't do it for three years. Okay. I'm sorry, what? I didn't do it for two and a half years? <laughs> oh my god! I didn't start hitting you until, you know, the, the third year of our relationship. Haha, <laughs> that makes it okay. Haha, <laughs> I didn't do it until now. Wake the fuck up, X. Hey, but you're not supposed to do I it. I didn't even think about it. I didn't even think about it for three years. I, yeah, it didn't even cross, nothing crossed my mind. Shit happens, I guess. I'm fucking bored of Dan. He's so boring. I have sex with him. With Daniel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh my god. Hell no. When, I'm gonna fuck Adrian. When's the last time you had sex with Daniel? My birthday. Oh shit. So last November, Halloween. -ish. Oh my god, that's a long ass time. Girl, you're like in way too deep. I know, right? Literally. What do you think I should do? What would you do in my position, Bella? But for you, you need to be honest. You literally need to just come out. Because if you're single, if you let him know that, like, you, you want to see other people, then there's nothing he can do. Like, he'll respect you. He'll probably respect it more. Oh. You just gotta do it. That's, like, the only way that you could make things, like, somehow right. 
it. I'm just giving you like really. What do you think? What do you think of the text messages Daniel sent me? I don't know. He probably just feels it like really in his heart. Cause when I feel it in something wrong, I like know. I like genuinely have never had proof of anything, and I've just known. I've literally told him, "Listen, you don't have to lie. You could lie to me all you want." But I just know what I knew, and look, it ended up being true. Oh, Bill. You need to, though. That's like, I'm literally giving you, like, the best advice that I could give you. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I need and, to and like, and like he would respect you more. I'm telling you, like, you're going to make... I don't know how to do it. I need, I need to do it. I should write it. I don't know how to do it. <sighs> do you think Adrian's using me? I don't... I don't... Does, does he talk to you? Does he talk about, like, like, I don't know. I don't know. What? Does he talk about what? Does he talk about, like, other stuff other than sex? Yeah. Then, I don't know. I genuinely don't know because I haven't talked to him. Why? Should I try to talk to him? See if he talks to him? No, that would be really weird. He would know something's up. Why he knows who I am? Probably. No, he doesn't. He knows who Lizzie is. He asked who the girl was on my profile picture. He's like, yeah, I want you at the same time. Weird. It is weird, isn't it? <laughs> but, like, you're obsessed with him. No, I'm not. Loki. No, I'm not. I'm totally not. You just gotta do what's right for you. And I know what's right for me, but, like, it's gonna piss everybody off. Yeah, but you just think that's why you have to be honest and say it's best for you and it's time to go your separate ways and just figure out yourself because you can't just go back into a relationship where, like, do you ever even see yourself having sex with Daniel again? No. So then how are you going to get married to him? How are you going to live with him forever? The no, but I want to I wanna fuck the shit out of Adrian. I just want to ride his dick till the cows come home. Oh, my God. <laughs> I want to, like, lie for eight hours straight. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm, all right, well, I'm going to go to bed. I'll call you. So, question for my audience. What do you think about that? A lot to hear, wasn't it? I know when I first heard it, I broke. I went through all the five stages of grief in the span of probably 10 minutes. Yet in January, because her name was still on the lease and my name was still on the lease, I allowed her to move back in and I went out of my way to have us have separate bedrooms. This can also be confirmed. If you go back on my YouTube channel, you can see that my background of my video is actually changed in uh, 2020. You That's because I moved my office into my bedroom and then I gave her her own bedroom because I thought it would be the best choice and healthy way to do this is because I didn't really necessarily want to sleep to next somebody who I'm having internal conflict with on, you know, dealing with trust issues and the cheating and all that stuff. It was just too much. And us having separate bedrooms was, I thought, a great idea or it was her idea. I don't actually remember. Regardless, we had separate bedrooms, which actually turned into a whole nother fight. And this is just to show context of the type of person I was dealing with. We had a whole argument on bed sheets and I called her a brat because she sent me bed sheets when I already told her I already got her bed sheets for her bed, but it wasn't the bed sheets that she specifically wanted and she made a whole big fight out of it. These are just normal conversations that we would have over the most trivial, stupid fucking things you can possibly imagine. Like imagine acting and, and writing this way just because of a bed sheet conversation where I say, hey, I already have bed sheets for you. I'm not gonna buy you those ones because I already have them. I'm not gonna spend extra money. I'm already spending a lot of money during COVID that I don't have to try to make you have your own space. And I have my own space so we can live together while you're on the lease and we can work on our relationship and go to couples therapy. That's what the plan was. Fast forward to the month of March when the lease was about to end in April, I had to contact the police because my ex physically assaulted to me, assaulted me her fourth time. I told my ex the first time in 2020 that I can't keep doing this. This is really affecting me. And she even admits and apologizes in Discord messages on how she was physically abusive towards me in a conversation slash argument that we were having. She admits full on to physically assaulting me. And this happened more than once, more than twice, and more than three times. Fourth was my breaking point. But the third time she was physical with me, I told her specifically if she ever lays her hands on me again, I will leave. And in March of 2021, she did exactly that when I 
asked her why she had a cock photo of another person in her phone, in which she then proceeded to lunge at me, choke me. I pushed her off of me. Her screaming belligerently runs into the kitchen, grabs a kitchen knife, and slices her upper arms, causing blood. She then takes her hand, goes like this, and starts wiping it over my room, saying, you caused this, you caused this, you caused this, you caused this, rubbing on my desk. You caused this, you caused this. How dare you accuse me of wanting my R's? Yeah. I didn't say that. Uh, I asked her and confronted her as to why she had a photo of somebody's private parts in her phone, and it was instantly met with violence. Just like the previous incidents, incidences were met with violence. It got to the point where this is a real conversation. She apologized for choking me and I explained to her, I feel like I can't talk to you. If I try to confront you or talk to you about any sensitive or delicate matter, it is met with instant violence. I can't do it anymore. And I broke. I said, I'm leaving. I am leaving. told you this. Seriously? Yes, I am moving out. I am dead serious. A hundred percent serious. Don't fucking get mad. Don't even touch me. Nothing. Don't. But let's back up. So I know there's questions and people are gonna say like, well, why didn't you call the police when this happened? I went into shock. I've never experienced shock before in my life. I've dealt with a lot of crazy shit. Uh, even when my dad chopped off his own finger, like I've dealt with some crazy situations, IRL, and I've never been in a situation where I have dealt with actual shock. And when she took a knife and started wiping blood over my desk and screaming, you made me do this because I asked a triggering question, I went into shock. Full on shock. I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I just shut down. I just stood there watching her wipe blood everywhere, which she admits to. She apologizes for wiping blood on my desk. Unfortunately, the camera had already been broken by the time, so there was no evidence of this physically outside of blood being everywhere. And all I could think in my head when this was happening is... I need to clean this up. 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 And I went into the pantry, or bathroom pantry, grabbed a washcloth, wetted it down, and I just started, I went into my room and wiped all the blood up on a washcloth. Because in my head, I, I'm processing. Remember, I'm in shock, and I'm thinking to myself, she's, if I call the police, she's gonna either try to like slit her throat or she's gonna try to hurt herself more and maybe she'll accuse me of trying to blame it on uh, me trying to murder her like I'm thinking you know go the movie Gone Girl I don't know if you've seen it but I'm thinking to myself I, I don't know what to do like all these things are just going through my my head at a million miles an hour I'm in shock and I'm trying to wipe up blood because I'm I'm I'm, I'm having a like a, I'm having a full-on breakdown of just like dead silence and emotional cutoff and that same night I closed my door I called my parents and I said, I need help ASAP. I have to do an emergency move and get the fuck out of this apartment. I do not feel safe for my life. My parents came over that evening. I gave them my firearms. I gave them my weapons and I took every single knife out of that apartment and I hid it and I took it and gave it to my parents. I didn't know what to do. Now, in a, in a realistic situation like that, I should have called the police right then and there and she would have been arrested. But again, like, 
I don't know how to, I, I was in shock. I don't have any response other than I was in shock. I, I didn't know how to respond to what was happening. It was overwhelming for me. And to have somebody hurt themselves and in white blood on my desk and screaming at me saying, I caused this, I caused this for simply asking a fucking question that triggered her. Now you guys know why in the last year and a half, I've said this repetitive phrase on my YouTube channel. I said, you, the individual on that camera, you're responsible for how you react to a situation. You can ask me a triggering question. You can ask me an invasive question. If I respond with violence, that's on me. It is my responsibility how I respond. Always. Nobody else. It doesn't matter what they say to me. It doesn't matter what they accuse me of. How I respond is my responsibility and nobody else's. That applies to you, X. That applies to you. Here is the police report of the incident, just for transparency's sake. And something that I do want to highlight is at the very end of the police report, how the officer even mentions how it seemed as if Daniel didn't want his ex to get in trouble. And now what you're about to see is my ex lying to the police about what happened directly. This is the police body cam footage of that incident. Howdy. Hello, 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 hello. Um, she's here. Again. I'm off the uh, camp police, just so you know we're being in a video recorded yeah, by body fine. camera. That's fine. Daniel, all right? Yes. Okay, what's going on? Um, she's here right now. Okay. Um, but yesterday, uh, there was an incident where she uh, attacked me mm -hmm. and gripped me by my throat. Okay. And she said that if I break up and if I leave, that she would uh, harm herself. Uh huh. And it really put me on edge, and I have it on video recording. Okay. Specifically, mm -hmm. so I set up a camera in my room, okay. and I just don't really know how to handle that situation when somebody's threatening to hurt themselves. Uh -huh. a situation like that. Okay. Are you injured at all by what happened? Uh, not now, not not really. But she did grip, grab grab my neck, uh -huh. and there was another incident in uh, summer of this 2020 that really I actually took photos, and there's markings on my neck from it. Did you okay. report that? No, I didn't, and I should have. Is there a reason why you didn't call last night? When I initially pushed her off back uh -huh. in August, yeah. uh, she said that if I called the police, that she would accuse me of hitting her. Uh -huh. And that's why I didn't say anything. Okay. Because I, I've never been in a situation. What? So, I understand if I'm right that you said she grabbed you by the neck because you were threatening to break up with her? Is that what's going on, or uh, what? Well, partially. I, I don't really understand. She has BPD. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's... Okay. I don't know. Bipolar, you mean? Uh, BPD is borderline person. Oh, borderline person. Okay. Okay. I just don't really know how to handle a situation where somebody is starting to harm themselves. Uh huh. So. Okay. And then, what are you hoping to be the outcome? I don't know. That's why I called you. It's not an emergency hotline. Okay. Was she injured at all? Uh, there were slits on her wrist. From what? From she took a knife and sliced herself up. Okay. I need to mention something right here is that I misspoke. So when I was describing what was ongoing, I said wrists. What I meant to say was upper arms and that small little discrepancy, the mistake that I said to the police allowed her not to get arrested. Because had I said arms, they would have shown, seen her arms and they would have seen everything. Just goes to show that you really have to be really precise in your wording when you actually go to the police. Because hadn't I made this mistake, she would have been arrested right then and there. Because when you are causing bodily harm to yourself and also threatening to not alive yourself, the only probable cause thing you can do in a situation like that is call the police. I don't care if you would think it's fake. I don't care if you think it's real. Call the police. Call the police. Because she was saying that she was suicidal or what? I, I don't know. I honestly don't was know. Was that last night as well? That was yesterday, yeah. Did she get uh, two days. Two days ago. Two days. For this? No, I didn't. She, I, I just don't know how to handle the situation. Uh -huh. And I don't want her to get like. Okay, so. I mean, it kind of ends up with like what you want to have happen with her and you guys together, right? Like, if you think that this is not a good environment for you to be around her, which it sounds like it probably isn't, then... Right, I'm, I'm moving out, so... Right. Yeah. So, something you might want to consider is getting a no-contact order against her, which is an order set by a judge that says she cannot have contact with you, she can't come within a thousand feet of your residence or your new residence, wherever it's going to be. 
probably a good way to just take her away out of your life, right? Because there's she's doing these sorts of things, right? And I know it sucks because you, you care about her, but you have to think about yourself too, and you don't want to be in a bad situation, and you don't want to have her get in trouble, you get in trouble for someone across the line or whatever, right? So I would suggest that's probably a good course of action for you to take. Right, I don't want to see things maybe this way. Um, can we talk with her? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, she's going to get freaked out. Just okay, well, when people are reporting that they're fighting, I do want to check on her, too, make sure she's okay. Okay, I just, I'm just nervous of the backlash. Can, do you want to come in, or do you want... What? Um, whatever, you can go in and she can come out, or we, I can go in there and chat with her, whatever's easier. All right, and so, oh, so the other thing, too, right, um, do you have a car? I do, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if you think that things can escalate from us chatting with her, you can always get in your car and leave and go someplace else for the night, right? Yeah. And just get that separation so there's no escalated feelings here with that, right? Which would probably be a good thing. Oh, I'll ask her to come out. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm also with Kent Police. Hi. Are you Maya? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, you're, it's cold. You're fine. You're not in any trouble. Um, just so you know, uh, we're being on a video recorded by body camera. Okay. Do you mind if I just chat with you real quick? Thanks. <clears throat> so, do you know why we're here? Um, not particularly. Okay. Was there some sort of incident that happened with you and your boyfriend last night? Um, there was no incident. I was just really sad. Okay. Well, tell me what's going on. Just personal things. Uh huh. There's nothing to do with him. It's just I was just very crying and hysterical and sad okay. in my room. So I'm gonna ask you a very blunt question, right? Just because I need to know. Um, did you ever grab him by the throat? No. Isn't that fascinating that you lied to the police? The very next day, you apologize for choking me. There's admission of you admitting to physically assaulting me. Okay. Is there any reason why he would say that? He doesn't want you in any trouble, right? He's just saying that he's concerned by your behavior like it ramped up and it was concerning to him because he didn't want you to be in some sort of situation where you're handling something, whether it's emotional or whatever, the fact that he doesn't really know what to do. And so he's called us here to see if we can chat with you to make sure that you are okay, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm concerned whether that happened or not because I obviously don't want anyone getting injured or you guys fighting, but that didn't happen. I mean, we, like, we had like a misunderstanding but we didn't fight okay we're fine now well, i mean we live together yeah yeah well, what do you mean by misunderstanding not a misunderstanding it's just there's just there's something that like happened like uh -huh. a couple months ago like somebody did something to me okay and he's like a famous youtuber uh -huh. and the person who did it was like famous and uh -huh. it's just i was just upset Okay. If that sure. makes sense. Okay. It was just high energy. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, you're saying you didn't hit boyfriend? No, we don't hit. I'm not violent. Okay, you didn't choke him or anything? No. Okay. Um, not only in bed. All right. <laughs> 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 TMI. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> did you cut yourself at all? No. Are you feeling suicidal? No. Do you mind if you show me your wrist? How about the other one? Okay. So you're not suicidal at all, right? all right? I'm since I was 16. I don't have a place yet, but I will find something. Is that about $30,000 in debt? Yes. Well, absolutely. I thought that said, but you don't, you don't want I don't that. want to do that, but I have to. I own sick for myself. For your own self? Yes. Why do you say you want to sex my sexual soul? Oh, you're sick! Yes, you are. How? You literally fucking trigger people. 
Of course, if they ever recorded and you and picked I the play, I Dan, shut up! No. I'm not shutting up. Dan, Stop. you fucking did this! No, I didn't. Yes, I, I, expl I explained to you what I was trying to say to you. You didn't say you it very much. You accused me of what I said to a soldier's dick! That's disgusting. You're only fucking over the I don't hate you. Oh, I don't give a shit. You hate me. You want to fucking turn me for fucking shit? I hate you. I want you out of here. You don't know what the fuck you do to people. I haven't done anything. You, you just fucking. You're fucking injured all the time. I don't know. You were talking about it last night. You, you don't know what the fuck I said. I do. You don't know what I said. Yelling. Stop. You don't you know, know what the fuck is going Why on. Why are you bleeding? Fuck you. Yeah. Why are you bleeding? Stop. I hate you. I don't hate you. I hate you. I don't hate you. I want you to fucking leave. No, I can't leave yet. I have to put in my 20 so days fucking, notice. So fucking put in your notice. I will do it on Monday and I'll be gone. Stop. Stop. You know what? Why are yeah, you this bleeding? This is what you've done to me. Stop. What are you doing? Fuck you. I haven't. Maya, if you are hurting yourself, I'm going to call the police. I hate you. Get away from me. I will not end up doing anything. If you are hurting yourself, I'm going to call the police. Fucking, I don't give a shit. Shut up. You know what? It's your fucking dream. It's literally what no. you fucking want. I don't want you hurting yourself, Maya. I don't want you hurting yourself. I'm fucking fine. You don't know what I said last night. Do you understand what I said? Or you're too much of a fucking delusional asshole? I don't know. You're, why are you cutting yourself, Maya? What the fuck? You just threw it into my face! No, I didn't. I said- Stop talking about it! You need to stop. You need to stop. I'm not doing any talking about it. I'm not talking about it. Because I swear to God, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill myself. And I'm going to kill him next. I'm not talking about him. I mentioned it. Once, and you're fucking going full Just fucking hang myself. You understand me? Stop bringing him up. You've talked to me the last three days nonstop about him. I don't know what the fuck. You talk to me about him, and then you're like, I bring him up, and then you're all mad at me. Maya, I'm fine. No, you're not. This is not okay. You can't cut yourself, okay? Seriously, this is. I don't care how mad you, you can't do this. I'm not mad, I'm upset, Dan. Well, don't be depressed. You didn't even ask me what was that last night. I asked you. You just accused me of saying that I wanted this fucking dick, you piece of shit. I didn't. I leaked I his dick. I said he had a tiny dick because I leaked his dick to Riley. Anybody, I don't care. You can't fucking react this way, dude. Under no circumstance. This is not, you can't cut yourself. Seriously. Okay? It's... I don't care if you fucking hate me. It's not... I hate myself. You can't respond this way. Seriously. I'm gonna die. No, you don't. I'm gonna die. That fucking knife is coming out of your fucking room. If you're gonna keep saying that, I'm gonna fucking... Don't stop. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna call the police. So fucking do it. I don't want to do that. So fucking do it so Colton can find it. No. And do everything. Just have a fucking great time. Because if you're gonna fucking literally slice your wrist open. It's not wrist. Maya, you're fucking bleeding everywhere. This is not funny.
didn't ask me. It doesn't mean, okay, you know what, you, okay, things can be said, they didn't want to right. You don't have to react that way, look at this. Okay, I have to film a video. Like, I, you can't fucking react this way. Just because you get triggered, you're fucking attacking people. You don't fucking attack people, dude. I'm sorry, I don't just want to attack people when they break up. I understand people have fucking triggers, but you don't. I've been triggered too, but I don't fucking attack you. I don't me. Man. Man. This is not okay. You just excuse me. It doesn't. Okay, it doesn't matter. You didn't fucking ask what I meant or anything. You just you fucking. You didn't ask what I meant. You just started saying how I just wanted his fucking because dick. Because you were talking about his dick last night. Because I leaked his dick pic to work. Yeah, that's a. You better make sure she doesn't fucking leak that shit, because that's a fucking crime. I'm literally, I'm going to be out this week. I'll find some, find, find some fucking sugar daddy. Don't have to fucking worry about me, I'm serious. I'm I do have to worry when you're, do, when you're doing this. I'm done, I don't care, I want to kill me. No, you don't want to fucking kill yourself, that's stupid. That's fucking stupid. I already hurt you and I already hurt myself, it's already different, okay? It doesn't I'm matter. Just, I literally want to die. It doesn't matter, okay? Jesus. It's fine. It's not fine. That's gonna get infected. I literally, you don't know what I used to do. I used to drag. I don't want to hear about it. I used to drag old scissors in my skin and pull out. I don't want to hear about that. Stop. Holy shit, dude. So, like I said, no one's in trouble. I just don't want to see you guys escalate and ramp up, right? Because I understand if emotions run high, I mean, it happens in relationships, in life, whatever, right? I get that. But there's a very fine line between yeah, arguing, yelling, whatever, and starting to put hands on people, because if that happens and someone gets hurt, right, we have no discretion in the matter. We have to start taking people to jail, right? And obviously, I don't want either of you to go to jail, right? It's not a good place for anyone to be, and then you're gonna have a whole litany of other yeah. issues, right? My like, dad does what you do. I've okay. never been in trouble okay. with the police ever yeah. in my life. Right, and, and so I don't want to see like no contact orders put in place, and you guys are kept away from each other by the courts. Like, Just all of that stuff can drama. right. It absolutely. So, if things like this happen, or if you're feeling overwhelmed, I mean, whatever. You can you can call us if you're feeling overwhelmed. Say, hey, like, I mean, I'm I'm not a social worker, but I'm happy to come down and chat with you, or call someone who can come down and, and find you a good resource. Okay, Any, anything like that, right? Yeah. But I don't want you guys to get in a spot where it's uncontrollable, you know what I mean? Okay. Um, I have your name already. Let me just jot down your phone number for our report. Don't you just love how dismissive you are of your own problems? Who rolls their eyes? Did you catch that? Honestly, if I hadn't have done this, if I hadn't had a police report, if I hadn't had police body cam footage, if I hadn't set up a camera directly on my desk, I really don't know the outcome of how this situation would have played out. What's the phone number? I appreciate you talking to us. And then can you have your boyfriend come back out real quick? Yeah. Thanks. Daniel. Okay. So, what the I have video evidence if you really don't believe me. Uh, I can, I, I will literally, she literally said she was going to kill herself yesterday. Okay. I, I'm not saying you're wrong or she's yeah. wrong, right? I'm not here to accuse and point fingers. The main I thing. Just, I just don't know what to do in that situation. Like, if you have somebody who's actually threatening mm -hmm. to yourself, what do I do? You should call that one. Okay. Right. If it's happening, especially in in the moment, right? Call us because that is something that we deal with too, right? If someone is suicidal or, or anything like that, right? Call us. Um, but if I asked her straight up that she said right now she's not feeling suicidal at all, then. I can't force her to no, go no, to the no, hospital, no, right? That, that. Um, but if it's happening in the moment, absolutely call. Um, if any incident like this or anything, even you guys ramp up and start verbally fighting, you can call us, right? And we'll come out and try to mediate and de-escalate that for you because I don't want to see you guys get into something crazy. So, not a bad idea. Probably you know, no contact order. Or separate or yeah, well, I'm already planning on moving yeah. out ASAP. Okay. okay. So I'm going to document everything that you told me, she told me, so we can have a paper trail of that. If you need to draw on that for um, you know, contact order, you can pull that case, okay? What's your phone number? Okay. Are you planning on going somewhere tonight? Uh, no, I don't have anything at the moment. All right, well. So I'm going to be out by the end of the week, it, next week. If you go back in there and it starts to be a fight, then 
you can just get in your car and go for a drive or something. Like, I just don't want you two to get into something well, tonight. I also heard that she's woke up. She, she's went in my room before mm -hmm. because we have separate rooms, and I don't want her to bring. I have a lot of like valuable stuff in my room, mm -hmm. and she's broken things already, and I don't want her to that. Okay. So. Well, think about you two and not having someone go to jail, right? I mean, I, I get it. You don't want something to get broken. Whatever, take your valuable thing with you, but. I just want you guys to go back in there and get in a physical fight. You know what I mean? No, no, no. So if that was going to happen, call us or walk out of the door, call us, whatever, right? Or go for a drive, find a friend's house, find a family, whatever it is, okay? Yeah, balancing act between, like, valuing your additional things and somebody could possibly go to jail, right? Yeah, So. Yeah, Five, four, can I have a case? As much as we deal with that day in, day out, we don't want to go to jail. No, from. Okay. So here's our case number written down here. Like I said, you can uh, contact our department if you need to get a copy of it for okay. any uh, legal yeah. proceedings. All right, best of luck to you. Thank you. But something that's really important to note in this entire situation is that she went to social media and claimed that I shoved a camera in her face. Now, you've already seen the footage. There was no camera shoving her in her face. I had a camera in plain view on my desk because I felt unsafe and I felt like that was the only thing I could have that keep any record of what was ongoing in that apartment. She knew that camera was there. She even looked at the camera multiple times, as you can see. She knew it was recording. And how interesting is it? Because what I'm about to show next is some other accusations she has made towards me. And you're going to notice something very, very peculiar. Uh, specifically, that she's actually taking pieces of the Onision case that I covered for the last few years and blending it into her reality. And what I mean by this is, let's start with example one. She says that I shoved a camera in her face. That never happened. I never shoved a camera in anybody's face. That's the only footage I had before she broke it. You're a fucking piece of shit, Dan! No, I'm not. Yes, you are! Well, you can take your keep telling yourself that. Because a piece of shit doesn't get to help you. Why are you gonna help me? You fucking ruined everything! You're being recorded by anyone. I don't give a shit! You, you fucking record me and post this online. Post this online, you know why? <laughs> There is no such footage because it didn't happen. Something Onision did do was pick up a camera and force it into somebody's face. He's done that on multiple different occasions with people. Another claim that my ex makes is that I wrote out an abusive contract and forced her to sign it. Remember in the Onision case where uh, he actually had Sarah uh, sign an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, saying that he, she's not allowed to talk about the relationship? that they're in, that, you know, that marriage or whatever. That's a thing that happened. That was real. And here she is claiming that I forced her to sign an abusive contract. Um, so let's see what I actually wrote out. This is the contract. This contract is abusive according to her. She claims that somewhere in this contract, I said she was not allowed to talk about me. Where is that? I... How is this abusive? She follows it up with posting an image of, her, of the contract that was signed by me and her, claiming I forced her to sign this. I didn't. But again, I asked the question, how is this abusive? On what fucking world is this abusive? I, you told me that you were scared of when I was leaving, that when I would leave, I would leave you with nothing. I'd take everything. I didn't. I left you 80% of the apartment. I wrote out a contract because you said to me that you're scared that you're not going to have any help from anybody. So what did I do because I cared about you even after you cheated on me? Even after all this shit? Even after the d domestic violence? All of this shit. I still write this out and say, hey, I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you money to get you set up in a new apartment. My own parents offered to help me because they knew the situation I was in. They knew that I w it was dangerous and they felt that I was unsafe as long as I felt I was unsafe too. This contract that I wrote out gives you more than divorces. We weren't even married. And somehow, someway, I'm still a villain to you, ex. I don't know about you, but I'd love to hear what 
ex-boyfriends would try to give you over $4,000. I'd like to know what boyfriend would give you and buy you a plane ticket to any state in the U.S. that you want to live. I want to know what ex-boyfriend would attempt to give you his PS5, his uh, pay for cat food, dog food, um, your apartment applications, all of these things. That's totally something an abusive person would do, ex. And it's so weird to me that she's taking elements of the Onision case and applying it to herself. Like, that's how deluded and deranged she is. Do you have basic reading comprehension? Do you need to go to college, read 97? Because no place in this contract does it say you can't talk about me. In fact, I've said the exact opposite. I've even said in, when I did a, a very vague Reddit response to when she first started accusing me of shit, I said she's allowed to express herself however she sees fit. And you know what? The reality is, I don't have a problem with her calling me abusive. I don't have a problem with her saying all these horrible things about me because I know that they're not true. But the one thing that I want people to come away is the only reason this video is being made, the only reason this video is being made, the only fucking reason this video is being made is because you called me a child predator. You know full well, X, that children is one of my biggest vulnerabilities. I just became an uncle to a four-year-old four-year-old month little girl. I'm also an uncle to an eight-year-old. I'm also an uncle to an 11-year-old. And I'm dating a single mom with children. What's the best way to hurt somebody? What's the best way to be vile and malicious? Call them a child predator. Say that they're a danger to children. Fuck you. Fuck you. That's why this video is being made. So, let's cover that. Let's see what her accusation is. Apparently, I chatted her up at age nine years old. Now, she's turning 24, so, you know, you would think there'd be some evidence of somebody who's been, you know, chatting up a nine-year-old all the way to current day of age 24. There'd be some sort of evidence of such a ridiculous claim like that. She claims that we met on Blog TV, which is an old streaming website, right? Well, joke's on you, X. We go to the Wayback Machine, which is a wonderful website which you can see archived stuff all the way back from the early 2000s. And what you'll find out is I wasn't even on Blog TV until 2011. In order for what you're claiming to be true, I would have had to have been on Blog TV in 2006. Because your claim is that I chatted you up at 9 years old. That since I was 15 years old, I have been secretly grooming you. I've been waiting for you to turn of age. You're insane. You are absolutely insane. You've also admitted in DMs, which you leaked, that to Keemstar, that nothing inappropriate happened. You even admit this. Nothing inappropriate happened. You, you also claim that I, I guess I flirted with you when you were 17. No, I do believe we had a conversation when you were 17. I know that did happen, but nothing inappropriate happened. I know that for a fact. What just angers me to my core is that you would lie about something so blatant, claiming from nine to 11 years old, I was chatting you up, implying that I'm a predator because you know that my girlfriend has children. You are vile. You are a vile, vile cunt. I would never hurt a child, ever. And you know full well that by accusing me of that, that would hurt the most. And I'm gonna be honest, it did. But this is completely fabricated and completely untrue. I blocked this person. I remember her reaching out to me when, when she was a minor at some point, and I blocked her for, for years. I had her blocked. And then magically she popped up again. I had several conversations with this girl when she was 17. Nothing inappropriate happened, even from her own words. And then when I was out of my relationship, we met up. She was 19. I was 24, 25. You take other people's stories and you warp them into your own worldview. Do I need to remind you, X, when in After I Broke Up With You, you made a Twitter post uh, saying that you just broke up with your abusive ex-boyfriend and then you linked your OnlyFans. And if this doesn't solidify what I'm 
communicating here. I don't know what really does. I asked my ex why she would call me abusive and then link her OnlyFans, and this was her response. Well, I only did that to get OnlyFans subs, and I got a lot of subs from that, so. Okay, that's one. That's the next one. Because I saw those, like, uh, Twitter things, so, like, people break up and they get a bunch of subs. So I tried it, and I got a bunch of subs, and I got, like, 40 subs from that shit. Wow. Hmm. Interesting revelation. You got a bunch of subs on your OnlyFans. You're abu yeah, you broke up with your abusive ex-boyfriend. Hmm. That's fascinating. You know what's also fascinating? That you admitted to another person by the name of Steve DeLive this month of October that you don't actually have any evidence of the claims that you've made against me. You've also claimed that you don't need evidence at all of the claims that you've made against me. You've also admitted behind the scenes that you plan on having your best friend Lizzie come on camera and lie and pretend to be there in, in, in interactions that we had in person. I sort of asked her what was going on and if she had any evidence to back up what she was accusing Repsian of. And oh boy, she went on to say she didn't have or need any evidence and that she would get her friend Lizzie to lie for her and pretend that she was there the whole time to witness the abuse firsthand. Obviously, I can't let her try to convince anyone of this after she's told me herself that it's a lie. Like, I just, I don't think I'd be able to live with myself morally if people were actually thinking this. I also know for a fact that Belle has a recording of Maya admitting to lying to Dan, as well as others about their relationship. So any Anything else Maya says with that evidence, I would have to assume is a lie. But what she says at the end of her paragraph that she wrote me, I think probably is the most insight that we're gonna get as to what her motive is and how she justifies lying about Repsy to herself. This is like me having a victory, like you're no longer in control of me. She also later states that she's only doing this to take back her power. How fucked up are you? You admit your crimes. You admit that you're willing to lie about abuse. You admit that you're going to have your friend come on camera and lie and pretend like she was there for the whole time of our relationship in person. What the fuck is wrong with you? You are the type of woman who gives other women who try to come out about abuse and or other men about abuse a bad name. You are the type of girl that takes away from real victims of trauma and, and abuse and you make it a laughing stock. Do I need to remind you this is the same girl I dated who made fun of the survivors of Onision? Hmm. Making jokes about an NDA? So I wanted to do some more digging on myself. And in fact, I went back on my Facebook and here's one of the first messages she sent to me in 2014. Now, I don't know about you, but 2006 and 2014, that's a big time frame of an age gap, right? And as you can see in this message here, she even messages me. But you'll notice a key thing. There's no really interaction here. Uh, this was in 2014. You know, I'm not a mathematician, but somewhere, somewhere the time frame, the dates and time and ages that she's trying to throw out there for the public to stick doesn't really fall in line with any sort of evidence. But I want to say for the record, yes, I spoke to her a few times when she was 17. I never sent her a message. She actually reached out to me and we vented a few, a little bit about our relationships and that was it. That's it. Nothing else went on despite her trying to imply that there did, there was. Um, in fact, I'm dating somebody currently right now, my new relationship, she's older than me. So what does that make? You know, let's be honest here and let's be subjective. If I'm dating somebody who's older than me, is she grooming me now? You know, because there's an age gap. Claiming somebody's groomed you from like age 9 to 24, like 20, to age 19, over for 10 years, and there's nothing to show for it outside of a Facebook message? In 2014, the burden of proof in situations specifically like this relies on the person making the accusation. I'm not going to keep addressing things that I can't disprove because they didn't happen. My ex tends to post evidence as a means to prove herself when the evidence she typically posts and provides actually contradicts what she's saying. You'll see this repetitively in the rest of this video. What I will admit to and apologize for is obviously I should not have opened up talking about my relationship I was in with a another person, period. Like that's just, that's cringe. It's really, really cringy, honestly, and it's, it's embarrassing, but I did. Okay, this was my second relationship I was in. This girl hit me up, wanted to know if I was in a relationship. I told her I was in a relationship. We vented a little bit about our relationship. Both of us did, and that was that. That was it. And I shouldn't have done that, obviously, but nothing inappropriate happened. No flirtation. She claims I gave her my phone number at set when she was 17. No, 
no and no. That didn't happen. Because my previous relationship, she had access to all of my social media. I have always given my partners, if they want to look through my stuff, they want to go through my stuff, they are more than welcome to do so. Because unlike you, ex-girlfriend, I don't try to hide from things. Yes, I fuck up. I have made some bad decisions, some bad choices, but I have never tried to hide from it. With the exception of when I was with you on certain things, because it was so humiliating and embarrassing, and there's just certain things I can't talk about or address or, or speak my mind off because I'm stuck with you. I'm stuck with you, and I know that if I mention anything and I try to express myself in any way, it's gonna be met with violence, it's gonna be met with uh, opposition, it's gonna be met with just a horrible, unhealthy environment that I couldn't get out of. That's the reality. But you know what's funny? Is that my ex actually made a Twitter video response. <laughs> yeah, let's see what she has to say. I'm Rapsion's ex. Whoa, 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 stop. Did you just classify yourself as Repsion's ex? Hmm, because I recall text messages just earlier in the year, not just a few months ago, of you endlessly texting me, uh, of you claiming that you want no public association with me. I mean, these are your own words. These are your text messages from me. You want no association with me. You don't want to be attached to my name. And yet now you're making a Twitter video saying, hi, uh, I'm Repsion's ex. Man, it's almost like you can't even be consistent with your own fucking words. What do you want from me? Genuinely. Do you want me to apologize for, th for me trying to help you? Do you want me to apologize for catching you cheating? Do you want me to apologize for trying to work on a relationship? Because if you really expect me to apologize for any of these things, you can go fuck yourself. I want to clarify something. I understand the narrative about me. A narrative, X, that you created. That you created on yourself by your own behavior, by your own messages, by your own tweets, by your own behavior. And it still boggles my mind that you even now still don't comprehend this. Show me publicly where I've specifically, when we were even dating, talked about you in horrendous ways, where I tried to convince people that you were this evil, abusive, ab abusive person, which you are, but can you find me where I've ever said those things, ever? Publicly about you? Never. Ever. And honestly, totally fucking fine. None of you know what the fuck I went through. Well, I certainly know what I went through. Oof. Ah. <coughs> Don't choke me. Don't. Come on. <coughs> Oof. Man. Ugh. How many times did that happen? The choking happened twice. You pushed me into a wall. Uh, and then you also hit me again. Oh, there's four different incidences. And I know, I'm, I'm making a joke now. Because you know what? That's how I have to process this. I have to make lighthearted jokes about my situation. Seriously. None of you know. The only person that knows is Lizzie, who was there. You had even admitted in DMs that you're going to have her lie and act as if she was there for large portions or arguments of our relationship. Stop while you're ahead. Stop digging your hole deeper. Because in the words of Luke Skywalker in, I think it, what's the, the, the eighth, uh, the last Jedi, uh, Luke Skywalker says, this is not going to go the way that you think. This is really applicable here, X. And people in my Discord community slash Skype, the Skype community is the Discord community. They moved. So the only people that know is your best friend Lizzie, who you admitted who's going to lie for you. And the only people who know is the Skype community slash Discord community, which is the same community, mind you, at the start of this video, the Skype community is the same community that you were associated with that you posted and helped you post revenge, P-O-R-N, of another girl. Yeah, definitely reliable people, X. Definitely people you'll want to be associated with who will just release, you know, photos of other people just to be vindictive, just to be vile, just to be malicious. <laughs> Misery loves company. What I'm trying to say here is you guys don't understand, okay? And I understand that I'm trembling over my words. It's because this situation doesn't, like, it's not fun for me. You think this is fun for me? Yes, I do think it's fun for you because that's what you do. You cause chaos. 
You like causing chaos. You cause chaos not in just my friendships, not in just other people who know me personally, in my relationship. You cause chaos publicly. Multiple times I had to deal with issues that you created based upon your own fucking words and things and how you would treat other people. It is fun for you. You get it, you you get exhilarated from it. I've, I've witnessed it. I've seen how pumped up and how emotional and how like, you know, up and uppity, uppity, uppity you get when people give you attention or you have people following you or, or taking notice of something you've said or done. You get worked up really easy. And when I said at the start of the video, you like positive and negative. You like both of them. It's not just one, it's both. And unfortunately, the negativity as the negative side of it is just surrounding you because People are speaking out against you, not because of me, I mean, they will after this video, but people have been speaking out of you even when I was dating you. This is not a me issue. I didn't create a narrative about you. You created a narrative about you based upon your own actions and behaviors. And one day, maybe when you're 30 or 40, you'll realize that. I don't know. It's not. People are, like, everybody always says nasty shit about me. Do you remember this message? Yes, taking your power back. Remember to be empowering to women. Telling a woman that you hope she gets arred and thrown into a ditch. Now, regardless of that being your ex-friend, wishing somebody to get arred is completely unacceptable. Remember, you're here to empower women, to take your power back, to be a voice of other women. Dude, this is like textbook Amber Heard. It's like when she went to a college and spoke on DV despite her literally having evidence and there's admission of her literally abusing Johnny Depp. I know the situation's drastically different, but in terms of like what you're doing here, it's the same shit. And the irony of my Amber Heard video just being a month ago, and then the same day I post my fucking relationship, you make these insane allegations because you're a jealous, insecure person who can't let people go and be happy away from you. So why would I want to speak out about something so serious that I know people are going to hate about me on? Like, why would I do that to myself? It doesn't make any fucking sense. And X, we've already established that you're willing to lie about other people to get more followers on OnlyFans, to get more subscribers, to get more viewers. You will say anything to gain clout, to gain notoriety, to gain a following, regardless of the people who it affects and the repercussions of it. I know because I've seen it, and this video has proven that. People telling me, oh, she needs help, this and that. I got help, so that way when I got away and I was un un unable to unravel my brain, I could tell, I could tell what was going on accurately. And I wasn't, I wasn't, he didn't have his claws in my mind switching the reality. Yeah, X. Sounds like projection to me. No reality has ever been switched. And I'll admit publicly, I'm not a perfect person. I know for a fact I probably said hurtful things to you in two, almost two and a half, three year relationship. For sure. Absolutely. But one of your greatest flaws is your inability to recognize your projection of things that you do. And then things that you do, you then try to say that other people did them. It's almost like you always want to bring somebody down with you. So even if you admit to doing something terrible, you can't deal with the fact that you did this terrible thing without bringing somebody down with you and accusing them of the same thing that you did. Does that make sense? Daniel has a very, very, very gift, honestly, if you will, of taking a situation that happened and he'll repeat it over and over and over in his head until he seems like an innocent victim. He's done this multiple times and he's doing this right now to you. What other multiple times have I done this? I'm not a victim, X. I'm a survivor of domestic abuse of somebody who is a chronological narcissist who strives on destroying other men and women's lives when other people either A, don't support you, don't want to be friends with you, or you have a falling out with somebody. And I've seen this happen multiple times with your falling outs with multiple different other women of you going after them when things don't go according to plan or somebody talks about negatively behind your back or whatever have you. Like, and the people that believe it, you guys are eating it up. And I don't give a shit if you don't believe me. I really don't, but I would appreciate 
if you stop drinking the Kool-Aid. This guy isn't good. Also, I just want to add something real quick. I'm doing this simply to take my power back. Also, I'm doing this to take accountability for enabling you for so long and that I will no longer remain silent, which I've been doing for almost three years now on your behavior and the terrible, terrible things that you did to me behind the scenes because you no longer have the grip on my nuts anymore. I was this fucking person in the corner constantly being threatened, constantly afraid to confront you with anything that you would do screwed up to me because you would just resort to violence and accusing me of insane things. You had my nuts gripped for a long time and I honestly was a coward. That's plain and simple. I was a coward. I was a coward who was trapped with a girl who was constantly, and you know, I wanna address this. I know people are gonna be asking like, how do you stay in a relationship like this for this long? I was stuck. And from everything that you've seen, I was stuck because she knows that when I was a teenager, n not alive, you know, was something that I struggled with. And she knew that by using that as a methodology to keep me in a relationship, that I would be stuck. I would feel stuck in the relationship because she would make me feel responsible for her life. When she's telling, telling me on multiple text messages and, and, and video and audio, I'm going to myself, right? I feel responsible for her. I feel like I'm trapped and that if I leave, she's going to hurt herself and then it's my fault. It's my fault that she hurt herself and it's not. It absolutely isn't. That is a manipulation tactic to keep somebody in a relationship from leaving and you've watched it happen and in real time. I challenge my ex to show me a single point where I ever threatened to myself. Because it doesn't exist to keep somebody in a relationship. That's insane. That's abusive. And I know it's abusive because I had it happen to me with you. It's just, you know, I'm not scared of some fucking public figure with influence anymore. I'm not. Like, as long as what I'm saying might help another girl or guy, then that's fine. I'm cool with that and makes me feel a lot better. You guys don't have to fucking hate them. You guys don't have to fucking like them. I don't give a shit what you do. I really don't. You don't give a shit what I do, so why do I care what you do? Like, I just want to help somebody in the future. Because I'm not going to let some girl get trapped the way that I was. Hey, if your reality is that I trapped you in a relationship, despite trying to push you forward, despite paying for your college tuition, despite going to college and getting you enrolled in classes specifically, if taking you to dance classes, if taking you to soccer practice, if taking you to piano lessons, you know, if this was me trapping you, man, I failed miserably. <laughs> you, you can't make this shit up. You really, really, really can't. And that's fine. You know, it's not that big a deal. Um, but it is funny that you made that little passive aggressive stab at the end uh, about, you know, you don't want any girl trapped the way that I was. The person I'm dating isn't a girl. She's a full-grown, successful, empowering, intelligent businesswoman. You claim that the reason I don't, I don't date people with social media, what the fuck are you talking about? The person I'm dating and I've been with for the last almost two months has over 11,000 followers on Instagram, which, by the way, you should follow her on Instagram. She does incredible artwork. She is, has a business in Michigan and in Washington. She does incredible tattoo work. She is a tattoo artist. Very, 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 very talented. I couldn't be more proud of her. And you know, she saw that. She saw what you said about her, that little stab at the end. And my girlfriend decided to respond to you. And I suggest you listen to her. Hi, I'm Jane and I wasn't gonna do this, but I guess I don't feel kind of forced to do this. So here we go. Um, I'm just gonna respond to this real quick. Like I just want to help somebody in the future because I'm not going to let some girl get trapped the way that I was. 
Hi, girl, I know you don't know me, but um, my name is Jane. I'm 30 years old, which makes me older than Daniel. Also, don't mind my house because I'm in the middle of renovating. That's why it looks ghetto as fuck right now. But also, um, I own this house and so do all of my cars I own and all of my shops in multiple states that I all worked really hard for myself because unlike you, I don't have to rely on other people for my financial independence. I actually worked really hard for my own shit. So um, if you could keep me out of your public meltdown, that would be great because unlike you, I actually have a real life and kids and family and I do not have time to be dragged into some shit that you're going through that I have nothing to do with. So um, peace and love. Thank you. And leave me alone. Thanks. Bye. Hey guys. So Maya just uploaded a video to Twitter and I was going to hold off on making a video until tomorrow when I made my YouTube video. However, she just said some things that I just cannot help myself, but to address um she keeps whining about how nobody understands except lizzie and the skype community let me just break this down for everybody including maya lizzie was not there the entire time i don't even think lizzie was aware that you were going to cheat on daniel with adrian this random guy you met from OnlyFans. And the Skype community, you have in detail explained to me how toxic they were. And that was the same community that you released the revenge porn to. That Daniel so desperately tried to get you away from to better you as a person. Because they are the root of a lot of your problems. And they seem like shitty people just like you. That's first and foremost. Second of all, I just want to say that... You're claiming that Daniel is this person that is gaslighting you, basically. He's rearranging your reality, and you got lots of help, and now you're able to see things for what they are. Maya, you begged to be with Daniel, but you cheated on him. And after you cheated on him, you claim that the man that you cheated on him with took advantage of you to try to manipulate him into staying with you. And now that you guys are broken up and that you see Daniel is finally moving on, you are now trying to manipulate everyone else into thinking that he's an abuser. But you didn't break up because you were being abused. You were broken up with because you cheated on him. And that is it. So I don't know who really doesn't understand that. I mean, I 100% understand that. He 100% understands that. You understood that until what? A couple days ago when you saw him promote his new girlfriend's art? Get a fucking grip and get off the fucking internet, Maya. You need serious fucking help. Of all the things I've shown in this video, I think this text message right here is one of the most telling. This was in February of this year. One of the problems with my ex is she likes to project, but most of all, she likes to point fingers at everybody else is the problem. Everybody else is the problem. It's never, she screwed up, she made bad choices, she made bad decisions. It's never, ever, ever, ever. There's no self-reflection with this individual ever at any point that I've known her. This text just disgusts me. Primarily because she says, I got taken advantage of by a, a predator and you can't stand it because it's mostly your fault. You know, go find yourself. I legit don't care. You lost me, bro. You're seriously an element of, oh, you're delusional, lol. I was being groomed by a celebrity and you shipped me, you shipped me off and let it happen. Here's a wake-up call for you, ex-girlfriend. You made poor choices, and you got put into a situation in which, if this did happen, I don't know. Quite frankly, it's not my business. You're not gonna use your fuck-ups, your bad choices, and pin it on me because you were caught cheating. See, that's the whole context. Like, we go from start to finish, you were caught cheating, I confronted you about it. I kicked you out of the apartment, you stayed with my friends for about a week, and you were supposed to come back, but you were still talking to the person who you were cheating on me with. So I ended the relationship with you in the end of September. Several months go by, we I try to distance myself from you. I can only deal with you in very small dosages. And eventually, because we're both on the lease, I allow you to move back in in January. We have we go into separate bedrooms because we need different spaces from one another. And yet some way, somehow, despite all of this, despite you sending me photos of the guy you cheated on me with, despite you... Um, bragging to be bragging to me about how wonderful he is and how he was so much better than me in every possible way good for you you then blame me and say that the reason you got taken advantage of by this guy is because I broke up with you making bad decisions does not mean that whatever happened to you is justified or that somebody deserved it that's not what I'm saying I'm just saying that if you make bad choices you have to live with yourself knowing that you made those bad choices you chose to meet a random stranger
who you had spoken to for less than a month off of OnlyFans. And you can't deal with the fact that you allegedly got taken advantage of by this person. So you'd rather blame me, and that's not gonna fly with me. You're not gonna blame me for shit like that. For once in your goddamn life, take responsibility for what you have said, what you have done. And maybe there'll be hope for you. Before I end this video, I want to say a few more things in rebuttal to my ex. Another claim she made is that I stole her cat. This is completely untrue. She already had her own cat when we started dating. Uh, when she moved in, her cat actually escaped. And for a whole week, the cat was gone. And we went and got another cat together as a couple. And then that same week, I, we got the secondary cat. Her cat came back, and now we had two cats. She had a dog, I had a dog, uh, I had a dog. She had a cat, now I had a cat. It was a couple's cat, so we got it together. And when we officially broke up, I gave her an option. I said, hey, this, was the, this, was a, this is a he said, she said conversation, but this is what happened for in my, from my side. I said, hey, X, I'm leaving next week. Do you want my PS5, or do you want the cat Dennis? And honestly, I'm going to be really, really upfront with this. You choosing a PS5 over this little amazing human, this raccoon, was the best decision you ever made in over two and a half years. I appreciate you, ex-girlfriend, for choosing the PS5 over Ditto Danish. You are the cutest little man. You are very gentle. You're very scared of everything. He's very fat. Look at him. Look at this. Look at the look at the beans. Look at the beans. Look at the beans. Look at the little beans. Oh, look at that. Oh man, he's being so calm. Normally he doesn't like being picked up. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Again, thank you for making that decision of choosing my PS5 over a cat. Because no superficial console that has a value of probably $1,200 now, <sighs> is worth the amount of love and affection that a cat gives. Dennis and Mara love each other. They sleep together now. Also, when we were together, I paid for the cat everything. I paid for the medical bills. I paid for his, uh, his, his snipping, all that stuff. It's all in my name. I have the paperwork all in my name. So in, in what deluded world you want to live that I, I stole your cat? That's not true. That didn't happen. I could not be more cordial with leaving you what I did and helping you the way that I did when I left. Which is another thing. So we're gonna go back to remember the start of this video, how I said she kept messaging me and messaging me and messaging me and messaging me after I cut contact with her. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go into my phone, right? So this is in April um, and there was an exchange. We had a huge gigantic exchange. She was mad over a TikTok that I made which she thought was about her. It was about all relationships in general. It was not about her. Um, I just said my last text message to her was, it's not about you. Um, but this is what happened. So I left. Um, my last acknowledgement to her was saying, was not everything's about you. And the last, any acknowledgement I did was a thumbs up on the comment, as you can see right here. And we're going to scroll through just casually. Just take a look at this, right? Hmm. Interesting. So... Just like I said, I cut contact with this person because they violated my privacy. And I didn't speak to him. Still haven't spoken to him. Still haven't spoken to him. You know, how many months did this go on of you just continuously texting me, asking me for more money after I gave you over $4,000? Hmm? We're still going. Huh. Fascinating. Wait, hold up. So I don't really know the context of this, but she reached out to me. Apparently somebody shot up like her apartment or something. I don't know the context of this. I don't know anything that happened outside of what this text, these text messages say. I'm just saying this to clarify because I don't know, maybe she's gonna try to pin this on me that I hired a hitman or something. No, I don't know the context of this. I don't know what happened. Quite frankly, I also don't give a flying fuck. It's not my business. I walked out, I'm gone, I cut contact. 
and any interaction with her will never happen ever again. At this point, though, I really shouldn't be surprised, considering that the first year I dated this girl, she bought some substances off of someone in Chicago, and she gave the guy who she bought these substances from an empty Visa gift card. And I specifically remember having a conversation with her mom, um, saying, like, I'm really concerned for my girlfriend's safety at the time, because, again, she gave an empty Visa gift card to somebody who she bought off of. What a genius idea! Last ex-boyfriend who you also apparently hit. But I know for a fact you've hurt a lot of women. And that's scary to me. It's scary to me that you masquerade yourself as this girl who wants to help other girls, all the while treating them like absolute shit. My ex contacted me yet again. This time she was asking if I would help pay for a car uh, that they could rent so she and her friend that she was planning on having her another girl move in with her, where they were gonna live together in the apartment and she was gonna pay partial of the rent. Uh, that didn't end up happening because my ex was actually trying to get this other girl to move in because she knew that their parents, I guess, are semi-wealthy. I don't, I say this allegedly, I don't really know 100%. I just know that the parents are very supportive of their daughters and my ex knew that, thus she wanted this roommate because they would potentially take over the rent and she wouldn't have as much money to pay or something. I don't know. It don't really matter, doesn't really care. What does matter is she asks me for help yet again. After we broke up, right, a common trend you're going to see here. So the sister of her fr female friend reached out to me uh, and asked me uh, why I moved out and the specifics of if her sister was in danger or if it would be safe for her sister to move in with this girl. And all I said is, I was very vague, and I said something to the liking of, I, was, I moved out due to my safety. I did not feel safe in that environment, which is why I left. And that's true. My ex then proceeded to accuse me of wanting to fuck her friend's sister, leaving me this wonderful, loving text message calling her all of these horrible things. Uh, just more context to the type of girl that we're dealing with here, who acts this way, who types this way, who speaks this way, it's just... I'm at loss for words at honestly how to process this, my ex. It, she's, I thoroughly believe, a lost cause. I don't like saying that about people. And I really do hope she can get the proper help that she needs. So apparently my ex and the, her sister's friend had a Facebook argument or something. I don't really know. I wasn't there. This was over Facebook. And I guess the sister called my ex some names and they got into like a altercation via Facebook Messenger. And then because I wouldn't specifically like block her friend's sister, this is what she sent me. You don't defend her calling me names, okay? But everything else is fine, right, Daniel? Fuck you! <laughs> Let's do that again. You don't defend her calling me names, okay? But everything else is fine, right, Daniel? Fuck you! Mm -hmm, that's totally a normal, not demonic person. Uh, next one. <laughs> Why did it stop? Sorry, I don't... I'm having weird issues with my phone. It's having a hard time playing back audio. No shit! And you defend that? I hate your fucking guts. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. In fact, actually, these two, these two messages I haven't even listened to. Let's see what they say. Yeah, all I said to her is that I, I moved out and I left you because of my safety. 
That's the truth. I didn't tell anybody that you were domestically violently assaulting me on multiple different occasions, X. But now, the world knows. The world now knows the type of person you are because I was fine with you saying anything about me. But the moment, again, the moment you called me a child predator, no. The moment you slander my name by calling me a child predator, that's when I'm like, my fuck fuse is gone, X. I have nothing to lose at this point. If I wake up tomorrow, all my people subscribe, my, my channel's gone, lost all my subscribers, so be it. I have a backup plan, it's fine, I'll be okay. But I have an absolute right to defend myself from false, slanderous accusations. You, you've accused multiple other people of being pedos, of being a danger to children, it's not just me. Do you remember this exchange when you falsely accused two friends of mine that I recently fix that relationship that you destroyed. You falsely uh, said you reported them to the FBI and to CPS and that they're a danger to children and being loving parents to their own kids with no proof. That's what you do. That's like the one thing you do and it, it's, it's not just with me. It's not just with the other people who you had a falling out with. It's not just with another person on Instagram, which I've already shown these, but it's just, I'm showing a pattern of behavior here that she just attacks people. She calls people predators. She calls people pedophiles. She calls people just random shit when things don't go her way because that's the worst possible thing that she can accuse somebody of. And I'm the first fucking person, X, who's standing up to you. And I'm not going to be the last person to do so after this video. You're not gonna push me in a corner and make me shiver in fear anymore. You've lost your power, and it makes you go crazy that you lost your grip and you lost your influence and you lost your control over me. You can't handle it. Another accusation my ex makes against me is that I isolated her from her friends and family. This is also completely untrue. Let me ask you this, ex. Why would I write up a contract for you to present to your parents so that when they pay your rent, that you'll pay a percentage of that rent payment. You'll help your parents pay rent because you can't afford to pay rent completely by yourself. So you asked me, Daniel, would you write out a contract so I can impress my parents to make it look like, you know, I'm really taking this seriously? Why would I, if I tried to isolate you from your parents, why would I write and help you write a contract for them? Hmm? I bet your parents didn't even know that I wrote this out for you. You couldn't even do this yourself. Do you think you could write a contract for my parents? Like, since you're so good with contracts, like, can you write, um, you know, rents like sixteen forty one. We'll be dividing it. I will pay eight twenty one, and they will buy eight twenty one, and that's all they'll pay for it. And I will cover. Maya will cover power and all that other crap and they're just helping me with half the rent. Half the rent. Could you write up like a professional little contract, something like that to wow my, wow my parents? Like just because I know they really appreciate that and they'll be like, wow, Maya. And I'd really appreciate that if you could do that, if you had some free time. No problem, absolutely love to do that because clearly that's what an, someone who's isolating you from everybody would do. You pathological liar. I hope your mom and dad see this video, at least know a little bit more behind the scenes that went on. After all, I do know that you lie to them too because you're really good at that. Number two, You've spoken in my Discord, you've spoken on Twitter, you've been very vocal publicly about how your mom and dad neglected you and abused you. Here's even tweets right here, you confirming that your dad is a horrible person and he abused you and all this shit. But you know, it's me, it's me, the, I'm the problem, right? It's easier to blame me than face the reality that you have spoken and made it own, your own narrative about how abusive your parents are. And quite frankly, I don't even know if what you told me was true about your parents. I don't know. I know I've talked to your parents on multiple times trying to get them to help you. I know that happened. But you know, it's my fault. I'm the problem. Did you ever tell your parents that I gave you over $4,000? Probably not. The only thing I did do in our relationship is I tried to get you away from your Skype community, which we've established is not a very good place. And you did some pretty bad things on there. That's what I tried to get you away from. You take that one example and then you conflate it to this whole I'm trying to isolate you. No. This is the reality, ex-girlfriend. You don't have a lot of friends. 
specifically female friends, because you're a vile, terrible, toxic person. You're dangerous, and you make people feel extremely uncomfortable. That's the reality. And instead of realizing, hey, I don't have a lot of friends because maybe I'm a shitty person, it's I'm gonna blame my ex-boyfriend saying that he isolated me from everybody. There's no evidence of that because it's just not true. And go figure, my ex reaches out to me again just in last week. So, <laughs> why? Why are you texting me? Why are you reaching out to me? Leave me alone. Holy shit. Do you get the hint? Nobody, I haven't replied to you since April. Wake the fuck up. I don't want to talk to you. You're scary. You're not healthy. You're dangerous. That's all I'm going to say. Holy fuck, I think we're done here. But I also want to say a special thank you, actually. I want to say a special thank you to my mom and dad for being so supportive of me during this whole situation back in March. Because if it wasn't for them helping me do an emergency move and them helping me financially, I don't know if I was even going to be able to get out of that apartment. Because again, I was stuck in an apartment, stuck in a lease. I didn't have seven to eight to nine thousand dollars to terminate the lease, so I wanted to help her. And I tried everything I possibly could to help her, and ultimately it still backfired on me. And if it hadn't been for my parents helping me to get out of that situation, I really don't know where I would be right now. I also want to say a special thank you to Belle. Her video will be linked down below in the description because she actually was part of this situation in the middle of it for quite some time. And she has even more information and more uh, text messages and stuff that I don't even know about and didn't even have that my ex had sent her ongoing with the cheating and just all this stuff that was ongoing during the time of our relationship. And finally, I wanna say a special thank you to my girlfriend, Jane. You're a rock star and I appreciate you absolutely so much for sticking by me on all of this, but also being a listening ear and shoulder that I could express myself on. I'm in a new relationship and I couldn't be happier. It is a total 360 no scope change of a relationship that I'm currently in. And it's, it's honestly, it's a little overwhelming to, uh, to be in the relationship that I'm in because it's so drastically different and positive in every possible way that I could imagine. And I'm not scared. I'm not worried to express myself. I'm not any of the things I've experienced in my last relationship is just, um, sorry. I'm good. Ah, you know, I actually don't think I actually really cried at all in this video. I did get a little bit, my eyes got a little watery in a few moments, but I think I did pretty damn good. Uh, I'm going to end it at that. Thank you everybody who watched this video in full. If you managed to get all the way through this, you're a rock star. Um, and yeah, I don't really know what's going to happen after this video goes out. I know I'm probably going to be heavily scrutinized, heavily criticized. People are going to make fun of me. That's fine. They're going to make memes of me. That's fine. You, you do you, internet. You know what? Go out. Do your thing. Make fun of me. I'm, I'm ready for it. Um, I just know that I'm happy to be out of that relationship. And I'm continuing on with my life and moving forward. And yeah. Um, thank you, everybody, who watched this video. And thank you to the people who even dislike me, who have come to my defense. That's definitely something that I didn't expect in this whole ordeal. And from the bottom of my heart, I genuinely appreciate that. And thank you for looking at things so objectively, despite these crazy, crazy false accusations being thrown at me. I wish you guys a fantastic rest of November. And I will see you guys next week for another video. Peace the rep. Shut the fuck up You're a fucking cunt Shut the fuck up You're a stupid cunt Suck my dick Shut the fuck up Stop being a fucking cunt Shut the fuck up Nobody even wants you here
I just wanna let you know You're a stupid fucking cunt Go ahead and run your mouth Pussy, I don't give a fuck You're a stupid piece of shit You're a stupid fucking bitch Get the fuck up off my dick Get the fuck up off my dick Like, please end your fucking life Please end your fucking life I really gotta emphasize No one cares if you're alive You're a fucking penis hole Grab a dick and eat it whole I need to know if you were dropped When you were just a fetus though You're so fucking ugly and your face is fucking foul Jeez, you're so fucking loud Can you shut your fucking mouth? Can you shut the fuck up? You're a fucking cunt Shut the fuck up You're a stupid cunt Suck my dick Shut the fuck up Stop being a fucking cunt Shut the fuck up Nobody even wants you here Yeah Close your fucking mouth You're just really fucking dense If you hate me, why you talking? You don't make no fucking sense Got a sad life, sad life Go to fucking hell Are you stupid or disabled, man? I can't fucking tell man. You're a fucking dumb shit You don't even run shit Get the fuck up out my face And go to hell and eat a dick Come and catch these hands, boy Come and match these bands, boy I'm not crazy, I just do it all Because I can, boy I hope you fucking die in a high-speed car crash I hope you fucking fall head first And get your neck cracked I hope you have some beautiful children That die from cancer I hope you catch Zika When your wife gets pregnant I hope you win the lottery and die the next day and your daughter has to see you getting lowered in your grave like uh, uh, ooh. that was a little dark i'm sorry that, that was a little dark very poor taste shut the fuck up i shouldn't have said that you're a fucking cunt actually no i should have shut the fuck up I, sh I didn't say enough you're a stupid cunt suck, suck my dick, dick. Shut the fuck up Stop being a fucking cunt Shut the fuck up Nobody even wants you here Now please leave me alone Have a great birthday